The, the majority of the world is ignorant to what's really going on, the oppression. You know, it's one of the, they say, the largest open-air prisons in the world, you know, uh, yeah. Gaza. What, what do you, I mean... Honestly, just, I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking when you see that, when you see yeah. what's going on down there. And uh, and you see them, well, I've seen videos where you see Israeli snipers, like, laughing uh, as, they're sh as they're shooting guys just running. It's like a game to them where they're just seeing kids running and they just want to shoot them just as a game, like, for points or something like that. And we see something like that where people are just protesting. But it's, it's their land, and they're, they're getting held into a little section where they can't move, they can't go anywhere. Like, my sister went down there. Uh, she just went down there last month for uh, a, a Palestinian uh, marathon. And uh, she said, we literally had to go through about 10 checkpoints just to get to... 10? 10. 10 checkpoints just to get to my grandmother's house. And we, we're, we're getting stopped at every, 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 every checkpoint, getting checked for everything. Asked, what are we doing here? Asked, why are we here? And she's also at... Because they went as a piece of group, and uh, some people had to get sent back. Uh, from the airport, they get sent back to the USA just because of their social media. If they posted anything that like showed them uh, protesting uh, Israel or anything like that, so like my sister literally had to delete all of her all of her accounts before she went down there. So it, they're just trying to make it hard for like uh, Americans or other uh, Palestinians that want to go back to see their home. They want to they want to make it where American pa Palestinian Americans don't want to go back home because it's so hard. Oh man, I got I had to stay at this checkpoint for like an hour or two hours or I'm, I'm stuck at the airport. It's not one, it's 10. Yeah, well, or more. at the airport, at the airport, yeah. yeah. She, she was stuck at the airport for three hours just wow. to get out of the airport. And then she said at every, che every checkpoint, you're gonna stop that too. And you're staying there for probably like 30 minutes, something like that, just get checked. So they're making it where, if I'm in America and I'm a bit, man, what, what am I gonna go down there for, man? They're, tr they're making it so hard for me to see my own land, for me to see my own family that's down there, grandmother or anything down there. And they're just making us hate to go down there because that's what they want. They want they want all the Palestinians to leave, and they want to just have all the land for themselves. Mm -hmm. Many people they also use this this opportunity to create a division and to try to promote that Islam Muslims hate Jews and whatnot. But this is a Zionist agenda. This is there's a difference between Zionism and then you know many Jews. I've had like Rabbi Weiss, some of the chief, even the chief rabbi of palestine at that time he was sending letters to the un because he was showing how the muslims and jews they were living together in peace their children were go you know muslims are watching their kids you know so now you have even i've had like nico pillet he wrote uh, a book called the general son he's an israeli jewish and he's speaking on behalf of the the uh, palestinian people this is just open oppression. Any American that goes down there and goes and looks and sees from themselves, this is something that the world doesn't really know because of many, much of the false propaganda, you know what I mean? And that's why this was really good report. This is something that's going on just recently. 750 shot. Uh, these are unarmed civilians. Yeah. It's sad, you know? So these are, you know, this is good. Like people like yourself who are down there creating awareness about this. So, you know, the average American, good people, they don't want to send, they don't want to be sending their three plus billion a year to go killing innocent kids. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, like you said, it's crazy. Like the average American doesn't know what's going on down there. So like when I saw, I actually saw this article, it was uh, on, this, on this video and I posted it last week on my like Facebook. And then I went back to practice or whatever. And I had like Anthony and Sergio Pettis, uh, two big time uh, athletes and they're asking no way is that really going down down there uh, and I'm like yeah no, nobody knows like people are, people don't understand what those people are going through down there man it's, it's hard for them to kids can't go out there and play down there kids they don't have a normal life down there there's always explosions always bombs going off it's kids are waking up every day thinking am I going to live today or am I going to die today it's not I need to go to school or I'm, I'm going to have friends friends like normal like normal kids should be having fun today or I'm going to go to the park today and play it's man uh Let's go protest today, and maybe we'll die. Maybe we won't die. That's that's what they're, that's how they're waking up every day down there. What's the food and the water situation also? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I'm also working with another uh, a project down here. It's called the Pious Project with Fahima Aref. He just posted that he's uh, he's uh, sending like liters of water down there and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully, 
we'll get a lot of people uh, donating to that as well. Because I heard that when you go down there on one side, you have the illegal uh, settlements that you had. Like, for instance, I want people to imagine you got your home that your parents and your great grandparents passed down and someone just comes and knocks on the door and says, you got to get out. Is this what's happening? It's, These I, are the illegal settlements that the UN has condemned, United Nations has condemned. And now for that side, you have now water, fresh water, you know, electricity, things we take for granted. And on the other side of the Palestinian side, and this is not just uh, Muslim. These are also Christians who are being oppressed, who are Palestinians. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I just saw an article the other day where they said uh, at the protest too, there's Christians, there's Muslims, and all those guys. Uh, my grandfather, uh, he just passed away uh, probably like, Eight, nine years ago and then uh we, my sister went down there to for the for the whole land lease and she said she went down there to go see what what's going on with the land how it's going to pass down to his kids and then uh the government said well here goes your here goes the money for it we took the land and it was like probably like three thousand dollars for a, a huge piece of land that should be going for big money or anything like that and they just gave it to him they said we took the land this is what you guys get we're not it's not like a negotiation where you get to sell it or anything like that they literally took his land and they said this is the money for the that get passed on to the kids, instead of my my grandfather where he had had a plan where it's it's gonna be huge where he's gonna build condos for his kids to live on there and for them to ha move their families down there to their homeland, but it got taken away from him mm -hmm. when he when he passed away. Yeah, this is very very sad. And people compare it to South Africa, the apartheid state of South Africa, and the same thing here, the open air prison, meaning that you have a wall. You know that, that wall. How big have you seen that wall? How, yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's huge. How, how huge is that wall? Yeah, it's big. It's big. Yeah. So it's like they are trapped. They can't even leave, right? They're trapped inside. Uh, the water. You know, um, the basic things that we take for granted. They don't have. You know, the Palestinians are the, some of the most oppressed people, but they're still in there. You know what I mean? It shows their commitment to God. Their commitment to you know. Uh, family and they're not giving up how's their spirit the spirits are strong and this is what i think is driving many of the the zionist forces again muslims we don't hate their uh jews we don't i mean jews muslims and christians you know at the pinnacle the golden ages of islam in spain you know what i mean these are golden years for jews you have a um, professor doc doctor i believe it's uh warrenstein he said he writes in a, it's called the jc journal in in a how Islam saved the Jewry, you know what I mean? How Islam saved the Jewish people when they were, you know, being persecuted, the Crusades and, and the Inquisitions, they were being persecuted. They came into Muslim lands and the Muslims welcomed them. And same thing in Palestine. They were welcomed, but now you have even people who have been Holocaust survivors who also condemn what's going on to the Palestinian people. Muhammad Ali, he was also a strong supporter. Nelson Mandela, yeah. Yeah, it was huge. Like you said, we're... People nowadays assume that you hate Jews. Like I have people comment to me, I think, oh, the UFC signed a Jewish fighter. Are you going to fight him? And I'm sitting there like, no, he's not even my weight class. And they're like, oh, okay, but you probably hate him though, right? And I'm like, no, I don't hate, like you said, I don't hate Jews. It's not, there's a many great Jewish people out there that condemn this whole situation. Yeah. Jewish people opposed the occupation of Palestine from the very beginning. It was in the 1930s, before the creation of the State of Israel, when the politics began, when the Zionists came into the region. Rabbi Zonnenfeld at the time wrote an article in one of the Arabic newspapers. It was called Peace and Truth, in which he wrote, he, wants to, he was the chief rabbi of Palestine, clarifying that the Jewish people have no demand over any place holy and sacred by the Muslims. Yes. Yes. In 1947, a year before the creation of the State of Israel, Rabbi Dushinsky, the chief rabbi of Palestine at that time, wrote a written testimony to the United Nations meeting in Jerusalem. And I quote, we furthermore wish to express our definite opposition, our definite opposition to any Jewish state, to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. He was ignored by the United Nations at the time. Several years, several months later, Rabbi Dushinsky sent a telegram to the United Nations in late success that at least leave 
Jerusalem free. Yes. 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 And that request was respected. This was how Jerusalem was kept for decades. Jewish leaders, the Jewish communities worldwide, opposed the creation of the state and still do. The philosophy of Zionism is not only causing a catastrophe for the Palestinian people, it is a true disaster for the Jewish people as well. It's the, it's the people that are supporting like the Zionism. That's, that's what it's all about. Nobody knows, like the Jewish religion and everything like that. It's all close. Everybody's, all these religions are close together uh, and they all believe like similar things. It's not mm -hmm. like I'm going to hate you because you're Christian or I'm going to hate you because you're Jewish. I, I don't have a hate hatred for a religion. I have a hatred for for hate. So like the Zionist people, they hate Palestinian, they hate Gaza, they hate uh, Palestine, they hate Palestinian Muslims. That's that's a that's a hatred. That's not a religion. Yeah, this is more of a nationalistic movement. A lot, many of them don't even uh, believe in, in 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 the Almighty in God. You know, uh, and and that's why you have many good uh, Jewish people stepping up and speaking against Zionism and the occupying force there. And uh, may God Almighty help to uh, bring peace to the suffering there. And inshallah, we can create some uh, more awareness and some, some good can come from the little contribution that we make to, to talk about some of these inshallah. things where, where people are scared to kind of yeah. talk about.